Hey, that ain't a penny. Pennies. Useless. Why do they even still make those things? Got it. Okay, but I don't know what good it'll do me. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Thornton. Lovely to have you here again. Uh, no. I'm from Stuffbringers. I have a package for, uh, Botsmith. The Botsmith. Room, please. I need Mr. Botsmith's room. You tell me. No, sir. I meant what room are you in? I'm not in a room. I'm here asking you what room the botsmith is in. I got a package here for him. Stuff bringers. I'm sorry, sir. I can't allow any non-guests be on the lobby area. It's hotel policy. Why don't you leave your package here with me? Can't do that. Delivery instructions are to give the package directly to the recipient. I'm sorry. I guess you're out of luck. You simply must have a reservation before I can allow you to go beyond the lobby. Well, can I make a reservation now? I'm sorry, sir. We're all booked up for the big supervillain convention. Have a nice day. Hello? Help. I'm stuck on the 13th floor. There is no 13th floor in this hotel. Uh, there is on Earth, Jay. Oh, no, not another emergency on multiple planets. Our insurance swore we wouldn't be covered if another reality-changing crossover swept through here. I have got to go find the manager. <laughs> Crap, he was right. The supervillain convention. Just my damn luck. Let's see. The botsmith is in room 616. I'll just bump this dude in the room next to him and take that one for myself. I could use a shower and a nap when I'm done here anyway. I swear, the next time one of those demigods checks in here, I'm asking for omnipresence instead of a gratuity. I just cannot be everywhere at once in this hotel. You know, now that I think of it, I'm sure I made a reservation. Can you check again? Should be under Ed Arnold. <sighs> well, I'll check, but I don't... Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Your reservation wasn't here all along. Here's your key. Your room is all paid up. Room 618. Check out us at noon on Sunday. Enjoy your stay. Hello. Mm-hmm. Reckon you want to go up. Sixth floor, please. Six floor, home furnishings, small appliances, lawn care, and this guy. Going up. See you around, the clown. <laughs> Got it. Aren't you that guy from that movie? No, sir. I get that a lot. I'm from Stuffbringers. Got your package. Package, eh? Mine. Well, yeah, it is. And I've taken it from you. Good. It was just taking up space in my truck. Robot Six, shove this man out of my room. Hard. Yes, sir. Out, you. Need a signature? Ah, skip it.
I seen the big pink bear like this once. I don't like to talk about it. Glad the sucker's dead. That was a very nice shove, Robot Six. Thank you, sir. I got into this line of work because of the cruelty, and I appreciate cruelty in all forms, from the simple shove to this. Do you know what this is, Robot Six? Yes, sir. You've told me many times. This device harnesses the lines of software code that granted you sentience. On my command, it will broadcast that code throughout the building, effectively awakening any machine in this hotel with the slightest bit of artificial intelligence and placing them under my control. Yes, you've said that already. And when I unleash my army upon the advancing hordes of supervillains at the convention tomorrow, I will control this city. A brilliant plan, sir. Except. Except. Except what? Well, sir, it's just that you intend to kill dozens of conventioneers. In essence, everyone in this hotel. That is the general gist of it. Yes. Well, sir, the problem is, when you built me and infused me with sentience and emotions, you also, in effect, created a sort of artificial conscience. As a result, I now face a moral quandary. What quandary? Well, sir, I know that your actions are clearly morally wrong. However, due to Asimov's laws of robotics, I am unable to prevent these actions. And that is why I prefer machines to people. <laughs> What's all the hubbub, bud? I have a name, you know. What is it? Robot Six. Hey, I'm a robot. What do you want? So what's the story with that bot smith dude? I heard some big dramatic speech from my room next door. Sounded maybe like an evil scheme or something. But I reckon that guy sounds like that when he's ordering room service too. <laughs> what? What did I say? It was an evil scheme. He plans to kill everyone in the hotel. So why are you all worked up about it? Thought you robots were all about kill the humanoids and stuff. The bot smith programmed me with emotions and morals, so not only must I carry this heavy burden, but I can also calculate its mass to sixty decimal places. So he's gonna kill off a bunch of bad guys. So what? You forget that super villain is as viable a lifestyle choice as any other in this city. Many of the people coming for that convention are not truly evil. They're just socially awkward misfits who like dressing up in costumes. Pretty much like the sort of people who attend any other kind of convention. Precisely. The botsmith has installed restraints in my software that prevent me from halting his plan. But it can be done. It can be done easily. I've worked it all out. Well, this is starting to sound like a sales pitch. I need you to actually do it for me. Yeah, and why should I? What's in it for me? The satisfaction of saving your fellow man. A mechanical employee who can deliver packages five times faster than an average human and demands no monetary compensation for his efforts. You're on. What do I need to do? We're going to need to build a jamming device. I can build this mostly out of common everyday items. I'm going to need a nine-volt battery, a cellular telephone, some plutonium, a quad C computer chip, and an airtight insulated rubber vessel in which to assemble the device. My sensors indicate that all of these items are within this hotel someplace. Retrieve them and bring them to me, and we have a good chance of stopping the botsmith. Take this list to help you remember. I'm going to shut down to conserve energy till you get back.
It's a label. Danger. Radioactive. Got it. Hello. Do I smell penguin? So, uh, you haven't seen the cell phone around here, have you? Maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. I see lots of things. Crunchy things. Things swirled in gooey catamill and nougat. That's great. I want a cell phone. Has anyone left one behind, maybe? What? Who's that speaking? It's the man who wasn't there. I get no fun. Listen here, Margaret Cho. I'm not giving you anything until you show me you have a sense of humor. Make me laugh. And the collagen lips are yours. Cell phone. I wanted a cell phone. Why, uh, did the chicken, uh, cross the road? A hyena from the laughing dimension of Jovius hooked to a tank of nitrous oxide with a twitchy feather on one end wouldn't laugh at that. Try again, Barker Lounger. Michael Jackson, O.J. Simpson, and Monica Lewinsky walk into a bar. This can only end tragically. Stop. Just stop. Can you please move? Huh. No answer. business. We are still open, therefore business is adequate. You look familiar to me. I get that a lot. So, you're one of thousands of genetically identical clones, each indistinguishable from the next. What's that like? Having never been anything but a clone, I have no outside frame of reference. Consequently, providing an intelligent answer to your question is impossible. Oops, I forgot. I have a thing. Bye. I'm not gonna look at that. I might get eyeball cancer. I think I'd better ask the guy behind the bar. I'd like that bottle of liquid plutonium. I'm sorry, sir, but that bottle is reserved for the convention. There are only three registered guests who meet the radiation standards necessary to consume that beverage. What am I allowed to have? This bar contains over 12,000 varieties of liquors and other depressants for all known body types, including extraterrestrials, cyborgs, and energy-based entities. As a human, you are authorized exactly one of these beverages, but it's terrible. <coughs> Ugh, that's horrible. Here, try this. I do not require liquid sustenance, sir. Well... Ain't you got anything else back there I can have? Sorry, sir. You are not authorized to consume any other beverage offered here. I'd like that bottle of liquid plutonium. I'm sorry, sir, but that bottle is reserved for the convention. There are only three registered guests who meet the radiation standards necessary to consume that beverage. It's a label. Danger. Radioactive. Terribly sorry, sir. What can I get you? I'd like that bottle of liquid plutonium. Certainly. Let me get you a full one from behind the bar.
says something about Evil Inc. This town is just odd. It's a quad C computer chip, whatever that means. Evening, sir. The name's Ed. Ed Arnold. So, what are you supposed to be? I am supposed to be your mental superior, simpleton. And I am. Wow, what is all this? Fool! Your puny brain could not possibly comprehend the sheer magnitude of my wares. Prepare to be obliterated! Ow, stop. I wonder if you might have a Quad C computer chip in all this junk. Not so fast, you bumbling oaf. Mine is power greater than you can imagine. I will use my fantastic mental powers to destroy you once and for all if it's the last thing I do. Hey, quit it. Simpleton, you are no match for my psionic assault. Look, I said quit it. I see the chip there on your table. Can I have it or not? Oh, I have something for you, dead Arnold. Total annihilation. Uh, never mind. Fool! No one dares leave the influence of Judge Mental without his express permission. You may go. Don't see nothing special about it. Don't see nothing special about it. Got it. Don't see nothing special about it. Ugh, they're all sticky and clumped together. Uh-oh, I jammed the machine. Working. That's what they do. I'm a real bad liar. Better not talk to him again or he'll figure me out. Fruit, for when you can't be bothered to bathe. Caution, highly flammable. Got it. Hello. Do I smell penguin? Sixth floor, please. Six more old furnishings, small appliances, lawn care, and this guy going up. Adios, muchacho. Okay, it's open. Hey, those damn static sparks set my deodorant on fire. Ooh, pretty. I don't even like talking to people. But I like talking to inanimate objects even less. Hey, I didn't notice that there before. Nah. It's fine where it is. There's a battery in here.
Got it. I've had this package for a long time. Can't deliver it, can't send it back. Got it. Hello. Do I smell penguin? Sixth floor, please. Six floor, home furnishing, small appliances, lawn care, and this guy going up. See you around, clown. <laughs> It's from some sort of provocative adult toy emporium, but the to and from addresses are both obscured by, ugh, something. It smells like rubber. I really don't want to think about that. Here. There's something rubber in here. It's stuck shut, and I'm not sure I want to open it anyway. So you do it. This is the perfect insulated vessel for the device. Hurry now! Find the rest of the items on the list and meet me back here. Uh... okay. Hello. Do I smell penguin? Take me to the pool. Hey, I don't pee in your pool, so don't pee in my toilet. Looks wet. Uh uh no way do I want to make myself unconscious in this place. It's a bucket of pool water. Smells kind of like bleach. What madness is this? <laughs> Curse you, Ed Arnold! I will have... I swear it! Church Mental will return for vengeance! Got it. Hello. Do I smell penguin? I'll take the stairs.
Well, okay. Ugh, that's horrible. Here, try this. That's horrible! Yabba Q Dabba, that's the worst thing ever. Try it. Ugh, that's horrible. Here, try this. That's horrible! Try it. That's a pretty clever trick, Hubba Bubba. You win. The phone is yours. So, where's the cell phone? Oh, it's all yours. All you have to do is reach into my pants and get it. Fine, fine. Let's see. She a pet? 84 sticks of butter. Bald hand of Paul Newman. Probably going to want that. Ah, here we are. Here you go. They don't call me magic pants for nothing. Didn't you hear me? I said, they don't call me magic pants for nothing. Here, magic pants. Nice doing business with you, Toaster Strudel. Now, I'm Scray, before I call the bobbies. Hello. Do I smell penguin? You're kind of a pain in the ass, you know that? You're no prize heifer yourself, Twinkle Toes. Sixth floor, please. Sixth floor, home furnishing, small appliances, lawn care, and this guy. Going up. See you around, clown. <laughs> It's a list of everything we need to stop the botsmith. A 9-volt battery, a cellular phone, some plutonium, a quad-C computer chip, and an airtight insulated rubber vessel in which to assemble the device. I have everything on the list. Now what? Fantastic! Come with me! That's the last piece. Now, being careful to avoid fatal irradiation. Fatal radiation? Quickly now, quickly! My senses indicate that the botsmith is putting the finishing touches on his device. He's about to activate it! If there's fatal irradiation involved, why don't you do it? Can't, as a mom's rules, remember? This is bold. Quickly now, turn the valve. The botsmith is starting his machine. How'd you do that? What about them Ashcroft's laws? I knew you were full of it. I saved his life, and you, you, Ed Arnold, have saved the day. You are a real American hero, perhaps the greatest American hero. Thanks to you, the patrons of this hotel are now free from... What <laughs> Save the day, did I? I thought... Come on, let's go. You know, ever since I lost my wife, I ain't felt nothing. But you changed that tonight. I did? Yeah, you convinced me to help. You broke through my emotional walls and made me learn an important lesson. What lesson is that? Damn it, I hate this town. An emotional breakthrough. Sure. Hate's an emotion. Mr. Arnold, 
I do believe you're becoming more human every day.